Also, I, very important that you explain to clients or p dog trainers in general have to understand this concept of generalization. And generalization is where you transfer one concept from a certain situation to another situation, right? And dogs are very much situational learners. There's a fabulous woman named Temple Grandin. People may be familiar with Temple. She's autistic and she teaches uh, classes at the University of Colorado in livestock science. And she's written books on autism uh, and autism in the animal mind. And her first book was called Thinking in Pictures and it was on autism. And the second one was Animals in Translation, which was a discussion of how animals <coughs> sort of work like autistic human beings or people on the spectrum do. And she describes it like this. For an autistic person, they see a specific picture. If you're trying to teach them what an airplane is, you show them a picture of an airplane, they memorize that exact picture. So you show them a different airplane and they're like, nope, that's not it. That's not an airplane, right? The other one was red, this one's white, that one is big, uh, the engines look different, nope, that's not an airplane. And so you have to show them lots of different airplanes before they generalize, right? I explain to you, you're like, okay, I see. That's same basic shape, so that's it, right? So human beings, we struggle with generalization too. Some people are better at it than others, right? And generalization, but it's hard, and people with autism really struggle. That's one of the reasons they have problems with facial expressions. They can't read emotional facial expressions because they don't see those details. Those don't look the same to them, right, as they go along. So there's a lot of different subtlety in somebody's smile. I can be smiling happily, I can be smiling like a fake smile, like I'm forcing it, I can be smiling malevolently at you, like I want to choke you to death, right? So we can have <laughs> lots of different ways of communicating, but that doesn't, they, that subtlety's lost on them. Like in Temple used to make flashcards with all the different ones, so she'd try to memorize all the different possible facial expressions so you could learn, like, oh, that person's disinterested now. They're still smiling, but there was a change. That's the disinterested smile versus that I'm really engaged smile, right? Which we hopefully see. So anyway, the idea is, that's dogs in a nutshell. They think in pictures. So if I teach my dog to sit in front of me, it does not mean they know how to sit beside me or sit at a distance, right? And if my dog's across the room and I say sit, my dog routinely sits when they're in front of me, right? Then my, my dog looks at me like, I don't know what you're talking about, right? And that's not disobedience. They don't understand that yet. I have to teach them that, right? And you're, they're at home practicing with kibble. I practiced homework last week. My dog did it perfectly in my living room or the backyard of my garage. This isn't there. Your dog will look at you, the same exact behavior, like, I don't know what you're talking about. And location, all those changes in pictures, you'll look at it like crazy. There's an exercise in Mondial Ring that we like to do called position changes. You leave your dog at a distance and they have to sit down, stand in different order. It's a common sport dog exercise, right? And, but in Mondial Ring, they make you change the picture all the time, right? So you, you teach the dog, I'm standing here, and I say sit down, stand, whatever. Try doing that and then turn your back to the dog. What does your dog do the first time? See, like, what the hell is that, right? Try to stand up and go like this and do it. Your dog's gonna look at you like, nope, don't know what that is, right? <laughs> no, yeah. Lay down on your stomach and look at the dog and give it, nope. Try going around a corner when your dog can't see you and give a command when they can't see you. Nope, They're like, I don't know what the hell that is. Can they learn to do it? Yeah, absolutely. So an explanation for the average person, does it, this doesn't cross their mind. You said, my dog knows how to sit. Oh, I bet it doesn't, right? <laughs> it may know in one context, it may know one picture of sitting, and it doesn't. So when you go to class, you frequently need higher value rewards in that environment to hold your dog's attention enough to get them to want to work to figure it out. Otherwise, they're like, I, don't, I can't figure out what you're doing. You're making this noise at me. I'm not motivated enough for this to do it. There's, look, there's five other dogs here. That looks much more interesting. I, can't, I don't get it, screw you, right? And they're out, right? And so I have these kinds of discussions with them. And, and, and with, if they're, I talk about kids all the time, you know, kids are the same, they don't necessarily recognize that before you can explain it to them, and so I'll throw all this stuff at them, and, and again, dogs aren't people, but if you can put it in those terms, sometimes it's helpful to break through that, but generalization is a huge piece of the puzzle. <laughs>